Have you ever wanted to see the design process for a gin business? Well, if you have, I've got you covered. So hey, my name's Abby. If you are new to this channel, then I am a brand designer from the UK. In today's video, we are gonna be branding our very own gin business, something that I have never done before. So if you missed last week's video of me showing my whole process on how to create the perfect mood board, I actually created the mood board for a gin business. So I thought I would finish off the process and actually create the branding for it too. So we are gonna be designing the logos, patterns, the labels for the gin bottles, and anything else that sparks my creativity. So if you are ready, grab your cup of tea, relax, and let's get on with the design. So welcome back to the design hot seat today where I'm gonna be designing our very own gin business. So as I mentioned in the intro, I did the mood board process. So if you missed that video, go and watch it from last week. And I'm gonna take these mood boards and I'm actually gonna finish the process, create the logos as well as the gin bottle design. So you guys probably know me very well by now and you know that I love bright colors, bubbly things and going for more of a funky vibe. So I thought I would do the complete opposite today, go outside my comfort zone and actually pick the mood board that I wouldn't normally go for. So we are going with mood board number two, which is the more mature, more sophisticated and the deeper and darker colors. So I'm gonna see if I can still add my style into a brand that is more sophisticated and let's see how we get on. So next is coming up with the name of the business. So I put my little brainstorming hat on and I knew that I wanted to play on the word gin. So I had a look on Google and found some words that had the word gin in and I actually found origin and it sounds really, really nice. And I looked up the meaning for origin and it's basically the point where something starts, begins or arises. And I thought this would work really nicely because um, we could go into like the background of the gin business relating to where it first started. And I feel like I could bring in some really nice patterns with like going back to the roots and things like that. So I'm excited to play off the word origin. So name and creative direction is done, which means we can get onto the fun part of designing the brand. So if you watch some of my process videos before, I normally go to my font library, choose around six to eight fonts, and then whittle these down to the font that I wanna go for. But because I'm working with a more premium and elegant vibe, I don't think I have the type of font that I have in my head within my library. So I'm gonna head over to Envato Elements to try and find a font that I wanna go for. So I know I'm wanting something mature, elegant, and luxurious, and I'm gonna try and find around three to four different fonts, and then we can go from there. Okay, so I have managed to find four beautiful fonts on Envato Elements. If you wanna check them out, click the link in my bio, and you can go and have a look for yourself. They do everything from fonts and mock-ups, the whole works, a really great resource for design. So let's take a look at the four fonts I have chosen and I feel like this is going to be very, very hard. So this first one is called Rogli, 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 Reg, that is such a tongue twister, Rogli Regular and it is just so gorgeous. The G, G's are just so awesome to work with. I think G's may be my favourite letter they're just so beautiful. So I adore this one, and this one is definitely at the top for me. Um, it can be manipulated, and I know from my other mood board, so I've got my mood board here. Obviously, we're gonna go for the second one. Um, I really love the swirls on this, on this type here, so I definitely feel like I'm gonna add that sort of thing into my typography. What I'm gonna do is actually copy over the mood board, so I've got it for reference, so I can always just go back to it. So next one is this one, which is Magna. This once again, the G is beautiful. I love the little swashes and the lines going through. Um, it just looks really nice. And I'm definitely gonna include some lines within my patterns as well as in the typography. So I really adore this one. Um, I'm not gonna delete any yet. I'm just gonna go through them. The next one is Wilkie Star. Will, Wilkie Star, no idea how you pronounce it. I love the eyes on this. It's really beautiful. And I think they have some really nice glyphs as well. Um, so it's definitely something I'm gonna go for. It is a lot thicker than the rest of them. Um, I feel like the others are just so, like, they feel like they're done already, which I don't like because I like to add my own personal touch to things like this. And then the last one is Moorish, which I adore. Once again, this G, Gs are 
awesome. Um, and there's a lot of glyphs on this one as well. You can tell, so the top three are all in lowercase and the bottom one is in the caps. And I'm kind of swaying towards the lowercase. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of the bottom one and head for these three. So out of these three now, this is so hard. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get rid of the top one, which may be a bad decision, but I'm struggling to see what I could kind of do to it to make it more of a distinct brand because the G is just beautiful already. Um, so I'm really sorry, but it's gone. Ooh. Actually, I might keep it to the side because I could add in something like that within when I do the G. Um, so the next two, I'm gonna have a look to see if they have any glyphs already and see if there's anything else. Um, this one doesn't really have that many. This one, this one has a fair few, which would be quite good to work with. The G is a little different to normal. All the other Gs go, have the circle head, and then they sort of go that way. And then this G, is, I kind of like it. It's kind of a bit different. And I can see myself tweaking this a lot more. I don't know why I'm like this. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I'm on my deathbed trying to choose some fonts. It's going to be me in my deathbed. Um, but yeah, I feel like I could tweak that one a lot more. I love the O and I love that it's thick. Um, normally I'm against sort of thick fonts, but I just have more of a vision with this one. And like I said, I want to add in these really nice swirls like this um, in this typography here. Um, and the font here is quite thick, so I do want to just follow my mood board and see what I can come up with. So, with that being said, we're going to go for it. We're going to get rid of this top one. Actually, I'm going to move this to the top so I can still have that G because it is beautiful. Um, I don't know if this is the right decision, but we're going to see by the end of it. So I'm going to choose this one, which is Wilk y Wilkie Star. Don't know if I'm butchering that. And yeah, I'm excited to explore this one and see what I can do to make it distinct and a gin brand. So learning to manipulate fonts will really help you massively when trying to come up with the logo for a brand. Manipulating and just tweaking type can make it very distinct to the brand that you're working with. And if someone else was to find the font and you hadn't tweaked it, they would probably be able to use the same logo or typeface as you. Whereas if you tweak it and change parts of it, it makes it so much more distinct. This leads me on to happily saying that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So if you haven't heard of Skillshare, then this is for you. They are an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators just like us. You can learn things like getting started with Adobe, finding your design style, and they have classes taught by some highly qualified teachers. So if you're a beginner or designer like me that constantly likes to learn new things within your industry or just keep on top of things, then this one is going to be for you. So I've actually been using them to learn more about YouTube as well as freshen up on my design skills and I've also just taken the logo type masterclass by Jessica Hish and it has taught me some incredible things from learning the terms to typography to critiquing your own work and just learn more about the process of typography so it is tailored specifically for learning which means there are no ads which is a win-win and they always seem to be launching new classes so I've teamed up with Skillshare to give the first 1,000 subscribers a one month free trial you heard it one month free trial so you guys can start exploring your creativity and learn something new from these classes so be quick click the link in my description to get your first month three and let me know which classes you dive into okay so let's see if I can put my learning into practice from the class that I took so I'm gonna be manipulating this typography, adding in some distinct things whilst keeping it nice and clean. We don't wanna to add too much so that it takes away from this typography. We wanna just keep it nice and minimal, but still adding some little fun things in that I would normally add.
Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, trying to do that G was very hard. I was struggling with getting the right lines and I finally got it to a place that I really like it. Um, I really wanted to show like a nice swoosh and then come back around and just make the G really, really nice to visually look at. Um, and I took a lot of inspiration from the image that I mentioned at the start with the nice sort of curvature on it. Um, and I really wanted to use the sort of drip effect to remind it that it is a drink that is um, dripping involved. So on the end of the G, there is a really nice thick part to it, as well as on the top of the G, um, which links in really nicely with the eye at the top. So I really like how everything sort of links into another one another. And it links back to the origin of where something starts and then it ends. So there is an end point on the G, which I really, really like. So next part now, I'm gonna create another variation of this and then maybe create a really nice logo mark for it. And then I can start adding the color palette that I came up with the mood board from last week. And hopefully I chose a really good color palette and hopefully the colors work really nicely with one another. Um, um, but this is where I always say to my clients that the colors may vary. So within the design process, we might find another color that works well, but hopefully the greens, the oranges and the darkness to it works really, really nicely. We finally have some logo variations. This one is testing me today. I am not gonna lie. Um, it was a struggle to do the logo variations. The nice little logo mark is so cute. And I love that the round border has the same thicknesses and then some thin parts as well to match the G. And then the secondary logo, which is the stacked version. I really wanted to get that intertwining into each letter and then connecting to show um, the sort of path with the origin from the start to the finish. I just wanted things to work really nicely to each other and it does, it looks really good. I'm excited now to try these deeper, darker colors and then have that pop of orange in there. I think that's gonna work really, really nicely. So I'm now gonna add the color palette and we're gonna see if this works or if it doesn't or if I'm gonna have to go down a completely different color palette. I am just, these colors are just work so nicely for this gin brand. It's so nice to have a pop of color in there while sticking to some deeper, darker colors. So when I originally did the mood board, I obviously chose some really beautiful colors and I, I'm excited about this. I'm really excited to start designing the pattern. Um, I did go back to the secondary stacked logo just because I didn't feel like something was quite right. Um, so I just took a step back and I think I was just trying to overcomplicate things. So I've just done a really nice stacked logo, incorporated the R and the G together to show that connection. Um, and yeah, it looks really, really nice now. So I'm really pleased with this. I really love the logo type with just the G and then um, the really nice circle oval shape around it. That will look really nice on the gin bottle and as a stamp too. So. I'm excited. I thought I would probably end up changing or tweaking the colors, but I've only slightly tweaked one of the greens um, and I've left the rest as they are because it works nicely. So I'm gonna now try and design a pattern. I definitely wanna use some lines, some ovals, just to keep it really nicely um, consistent with the logo now and see what I can come up with. So we finally have a really nice abstract pattern, something that I didn't think I was actually gonna go for. So originally you saw me design something with the circular shapes with some lines just to get some structure, but I just felt like it was taking away from the really nice curvature within the typography. So 
I took the really nice tail on the G and I made a really nice abstract pattern with it and I think it works really, really nicely. It works really nicely when it's sort of zoomed in and you can see the really big tails of the G and I'm really happy with how the pattern and everything has come together. I really like the cream background with the green on top. That one works really nicely and the colour palette I'm actually really happy with when choosing it for my mood board. So. Um, it has come together very well. It's not exactly how I envisioned it looking, but I think it's gone down a really nice route. So let me know if you like the route that I've gone down, if the colours work. I think they work really nicely and I'm really excited to see them all mocked up. Um, we're going to create a really nice label for a gin bottle and then we can see this branding in action and see if it actually looks good. So I'm going to head over to Envato, see if there are any gin bottles, any alcoholic beverages that I can put a label on or see if there's anything else that I can come up with design wise when you would order a bottle of gin so maybe like a thank you card or some nice tissue paper that the bottle um, is wrapped in. I literally love when it all comes together and looks incredible when you put the mock-ups in. It looks so, so good. The only thing that I wanna do now is add some photography in. So when I show you the brand reveal, I will show you with some video, some photography, so you can get a whole feeling for this brand. This one has been quite hard. Um, using deeper, darker colors, I don't normally do that. So it's been really good to sort of push myself into that direction instead of going for what I would normally do, which is the bright and bold colors. So if you are a designer and you wanna try out different styles, so make sure you are pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, not just sticking to the stuff that you know and you are just pushing yourself to see if you can actually design things that you don't normally do. And this is one of them. I've never designed a gin brand before, never designed the labels. So it's been really nice to just sort of design it and just go for it. It was hard, but we got there in the end and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'm gonna reveal to you this whole brand origin. Let me know what you think of the whole brand overall in the comments down below. The thing that I love about creating brands and designs on this YouTube channel is that normally I would probably sit there for the whole day tweaking things, trying to get things perfect, but because I try and do this within a certain amount of hours, it really pushes me to just get on and do it. So if you wanna try and do that, set yourself a time limit, it does really help. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see some more content just like this. Mm -hmm.